John Meacham, I think a lot of people are wondering tonight, what is it that we're watching? Is it a war between two countries with one clear bad perpetrator, or is this a prelude to a worldwide conflict? You, of course, cannot predict the future, but how are you as a historian viewing this tonight? Well, one of the tragedies of history and the inevitable uh, fact of history is that this is the way large conflicts begin. Uh, large conflicts don't tend to begin as large conflicts. Uh, they do, in fact, grow. Uh, we saw that it, it unfolded much more rapidly in uh, August 1914. Uh, we saw it from uh, September of 1939 and even earlier. Uh, in Europe. So I think the way I've been watching this is we're in this fascinating, seems to me, uh, kind of combination of this being a classic great power war where the rule of the strong, uh, Vladimir Putin is stronger than Ukraine, uh, or at least he thought he was, uh, and he was on paper, and he wants that land. He wants that country. And the rule of law, whether explicit or implicit, uh, the notion that sovereignty is more important than subjugation, that in fact there is an order to the way the world uh, should work, given the horrible lessons and the horrible experience that we've had throughout our history. Remember, if dictators aren't stopped, uh, these wars grow, and if you, and you end up rewarding a growth. And so I think, so you have that unfolding. You have sort of a classic, uh, almost obsian struggle uh, of the strong trying to take over the weak. In a nuclear uh, 21st century, world where we do have the scientific capacity to end the world many times over. And so it's it's this odd uh, and scary situation. It's why uh, I think that President Biden's done a terrific job of balancing, uh, of, of being forward-leaning, standing up as far as uh, wisdom allows. And, you know, presidencies and eras are almost always defined by things we might not have expected to happen. Hmm. And this is one of them. And I think what we're going to be watching in these, in these images of the Ukrainian bravery, uh, the American diplomatic efforts, uh, this remarkable economic cordon that uh, the president and leading our allies in doing, is we won't know for a long time historically. But the thing, to go to your very good question, the thing to remember is that large, it's like large conflicts begin with smaller conflicts. And so that's the first thing. It's almost a Hippocratic oath of diplomacy, is not letting that happen. Speaking about President Biden, we've seen the administration explicitly call upon Americans to keep in mind that the fight for democracy, as they pay more for gas. How does President Biden contextualize America's role here, given that we're not a combatant? How does he talk about this to the American people? It's being totally straightforward, right? There, there's, no, uh, there's no spin here. Uh, there's no reason to sugarcoat it. Uh, one of the covenant of modern democracies, when you think about it, is if you give it to us straight, Americans tend to do what it takes. Presidents who get in trouble are the presidents who think they're smarter than the American people and that they can sort of shape reality. Uh, if you think about the presidents in Vietnam, if you think about Watergate, if you think about uh, presidents who underestimate and don't prepare us for hard things are the ones who tend to uh, do poorly. And it's a genuine price. Uh, you know, FDR said in uh, the spring of 1942 that the news is going to get worse and worse before it gets better and better. And the American people deserve to have it straight from the shoulder. And, you know, Winston Churchill had a great uh, two-pronged test on that uh, in the same era. He said that the British people can face any misfortune with fortitude and buoyancy, a classic Churchill phrase, with fortitude and buoyancy, as long as they're convinced that their leaders are not lying to them or are not themselves dwelling in a fool's paradise. 
So if you think about that, it's a two-pronged test. We want to be sure you're not misleading us, and we want to have our best judgment that you're not misleading yourself. And I think that if we can check those two boxes, we can move forward here. Here, here's the thing, John Meacham, I understand that in a, in a normal environment, but as I don't need to tell you and as I don't need to tell our viewers, this comes as America's grappling with our own anti-democratic forces that are being led by a former president. This particular type of domestic division feels like uncharted territory for an American president. Am I wrong? L well, wrongish, <laughs> uh, to, to coin a phrase. Um, you know, Arthur Schlesinger used to say that the the divisions over intervention versus isolationism in the late 1930s were even more ferocious than the battles over Vietnam in the mm -hmm. 1960s. Uh, you know, remember, World War II started for uh, Europe on September 1st, 1939. The United States didn't get into World War II, despite the mythology, until 1st December 7th, 1941, more than two years later. And we didn't declare war on Germany until Germany declared war on us, right? FDR did not read the, get the news of Pearl Harbor and then say, we're going to war with Germany. It took several days. And, you know, there's, there's an old uh, saying that's attributed to Churchill uh, that you can always count on the Americans to do the right thing once they've exhausted every other possibility. Where I think we are, and I think the challenge for the president is... Of course, there is this reflexive partisanship. Of course, there are these uh, separate realities. But all you can do is tell the truth. All you can do is do your best. Because fundamentally, if democracy is going to survive, and we're going we're to get very heavy here briefly, if democracy is going to survive, if it's going to long endure, we have to prove ourselves capable of handling the truth about a crisis like this, of doing what we can, and of not simply falling into this machinery of perpetual conflict that's often, as you say, fueled by lies and self-serving narratives. And maybe we're not up to it. I think we are. I pray we are. But the question you ask is really fundamental. And we're, you know, these things don't happen quickly. Uh, the crisis of 2016 through January 6, 2021, was the fullest manifestation of, of many of the worst forces in American life. They're forces that ebb and they flow, and they flowed for a long time. I think the president's doing all he can to make them ebb, but he has to have all of us doing it. And it requires us to stop and think for a moment before we offer an opinion, before we declare you know, one side or the other wrong. This is a real, genuine stress test for democratic lowercase d citizenship.